For my English Lit A level, I study Othello by William Shakespeare, and I know that one of the best revision skills is to teach someone else, and since I don't really want to do that, I thought I might as well just teach you, random person. <laughs> so this is a kind of a general overview. I might make other videos to do with more specific things. The play is the story of a black man called Othello who marries a white woman called Desdemona and the development of their relationship. The play is a domestic tragedy and this is established in Act 2, Scene 1 as the Turks are defeated because at this time the Turks and the Venetians are fighting over the island Cyprus which is where meant the characters end up. And all this means really is that the conflict and the tragedy is around the people and it's not about war or countries and things like that. The play was written in the early 1600s, I believe, so it's kind of Elizabethan, Jacobean kind of time. So at this time, the audience watching the play would have been very racially prejudiced, and so a lot of them probably would have had this preconceived idea of what Othello's character was going to be like, probably kind of wild and dangerous and lusty. And this is quite far from Othello's character. And so by making Othello brave and a good general and very respectful, Shakespeare was being somewhat subversive for the time. And part of the tragedy of the play is that Iago tricks Othello into fulfilling his racial stereotype, that he will be violent and dangerous and evil and almost the epitome of the devil. And at this time, it's important to note that the devil was depicted as black. And so it's very likely at this very heavily Christian time that the audience would have been aware of this. It is also very ironic as the character who tricks Othello into appearing as this devilish man is actually far closer to the devil himself and he is white and that is Iago. So at the beginning of the play Othello is respectful and humble and righteous and importantly aware of the fact that he is a black man in Venice. He is not going to be accepted particularly as he has married Desdemona in secret knowing that probably she wouldn't be allowed to marry him. Desdemona is the daughter of a white Venetian nobleman and she is quite often presented as naive and youthful and and very much in love with Othello. However, she does have m significant moments of independence as she chooses the man she wants to marry, speaks to the Duke and argues for her case when she says, I love the more to live with him. Now, Iago is Othello's ensign, which effectively means he's his flag bearer, so he's very close to Othello. In Act 1, Scene 1, Iago says, I hate the more and a number of other things which indicate that he is really only serving his own interests. He says, in following the more I follow myself, he says, I am not what I am, and he also says that I follow the more to turn upon him. He never gives a reason why he hates Othello. He says that it's because Cassio is given the lieutenantry. However, if Cassio becoming Othello's lieutenant was the only reason that Iago hated Othello, then he would have given up by the time he makes Cassio lose his lieutenantry. But he doesn't, he keeps going. And so Cassio loses his lieutenantry in, is that word lieutenantry? He loses his position in Act 2, Scene 3. So there is all the rest of the play where Iago continues to push Othello. He also says that he suspects Othello has slept with his wife Amelia, however this really never comes up again, he says this once, and so we don't really believe this as a reason for his hatred. In addition, Amelia says that Iago had often asked her to steal the handkerchief, which later leads to the whole demise of everyone. So this indicates that Iago has for a long time wanted to destroy Othello. If you're going to write about this in an essay, Iago can pretty much always be called duplicitous because in the first act he says, I hate them all, and he then says later on things like, you know I love you, and things like that. So basically, whenever Iago is referred to as good Iago or honest Iago, that's dramatic irony and you can always talk about that and he's always being duplicitous because he revealed his intentions and his feelings at the very beginning of the play. Iago's language is often very base, he often speaks in prose rather than verse because everyone else, particularly Othello, speaks in iambic pentameter and it's all very high-flown and tragically heroic. <laughs> And also, Iago's language is often very sexual, and he says things like, Right now, a black ram is topping your white you. He goes straight in for making things sexual, or animalistic, or monstrous. A good example of this is when Desdemona has just arrived at Cyprus, Othello isn't there yet, and Cassio is taking Desdemona's hand, and he's being very respectful, and 
Iago twists this to make it seem like they're having some kind of illicit moment in the middle of Cyprus, which is ridiculous. However, that is a really, really good moment to pick up on if you want to talk about Iago being base and sexual. Another good moment is in Act 3, Scene 3, where Iago is talking about Cassio or Cass suppose Cassio's supposed dream where he's grabbing onto Iago in his sleep and crying out Desdemona and there's a really nice internal rhyme that you can talk about and it's all very, yeah, this all gets twisted and very, it's very good at talking about things in a very sexual way. Iago quite often dehumanises Othello and for example in that last quote that I just used he positions Othello as a black ram. Black obviously goes with the fact that Othello is a black man uh, but then you also have all the connotations of black in standard connotations in, in literature being like evil, unholy, sinful, dangerous, stuff like that. And Desdemona on the other hand is presented as first of all an object of her father's, your white to you, the possessive determiner your, whereas Othello is a black ram, the indefinite article A <laughs> says that he's just any old one whereas Desdemona belongs to her father and she is a white you she is white she is pure she is she is literally white and she is holy and chaste and all those good things and tupping is obviously a very crass kind of uh, very lewd. Iago often positions Othello in the stereotype. Something that is played off quite often is the fact that Othello is not Venetian he comes from elsewhere he says things that aren't quite what everyone expects. He talks about the anthropophagi and the men whose head grow below below their shoulders and things like that which just signify and kind of almost emphasize the fact that he does not look Venetian. He is not Venetian and that is something that is used by other characters or even just gives other characters this kind of thing to latch onto when he starts behaving really evilly by killing his wife. Because even Amelia, who knows Othello and knows Desdemona, references the fact that he's a Moor when he kills Desdemona. Next we have Amelia, who is Iago's wife, and she is presented to be kind of worldly and aware and somewhat thoughtful, if perhaps a little cynical. She's not the kind of stereotypical doting wife. The moment she really steps out of being a kind of obedient wife is after she realises that Iago is to blame for the whole mess of Othello killing Desdemona and ultimately killing himself, and she refuses to be silent and she tells everyone, she effectively reveals him. One of her questionable decisions is when she steals Desdemona's handkerchief and gives it to Iago. It's never quite certain why she does this. However, we know that Iago has often asked her to do it. It could be speculated that she's trying to get his attention, she's just doing what she's told, she's a bit, maybe she does, she's a bit resentful of Desdemona because she's young and naive and in love and things like that, but that's only speculation, you can't really say that that is definitely true. Iago then uses the handkerchief and plants it in Cassio's room and tells Othello that he saw Cassio wiping his beard with it and this drives Othello mad. Now this is why the handkerchief as a symbol, it is a small fragile thing that is symbolic of Desdemona's love and the love that she shares with Othello. However, this is almost twisted into her fidelity. The pattern on the handkerchief is of red strawberries against a white background. The pattern is suggestive of a marriage bed where there would be blood because the woman is expected to be a virgin and is expected to bleed the first time she has sex. And so then it becomes the symbol of their marriage, of her fidelity. It also shows Iago's ability to manipulate because really this is the only proof that Iago and Othello has of Desdemona's supposed infidelity. And despite Othello asking for the ocular proof, he doesn't get it and he still believes that she's unfaithful to him. Now there's lots of things to be discussed about whether or not their relationship is particularly strong or if Othello is just gullible or Othello's stupid, which I don't think, but... The next symbol is the song Willow, which Desdemona sings. The song is about a woman who is betrayed by her lover and this is an example of proleptic irony as very shortly after Desdemona is killed by her own husband. The song is also suggestive that men and women are both unfaithful to each other and then this leads on for Desdemona and Amelia to have this discussion about infidelity and Desdemona shows herself to be quite naive as she says she'd never do that, she doesn't understand why anyone would and Amelia is much more, well I might do. And Amelia is a bit older than Desdemona and Desdemona is somewhat almost stereotypically young and naive and She's also much younger than Othello, which is also part of the whole, you know, scandal. So, that was a general overview of Othello. I still feel like there's so much to be talked about, 
but I feel like this has been really helpful for me at least. <laughs> Thank you for watching, I hope you have a nice day and I shall see you later, goodbye.